Betty. In the same days, it was by the Apollo, because at that time, Apollo was sent to the body Apollo, body Malinja, and everything. But because the word Apollo itself was introduced in the discourse of the Philippine economy, then it becomes a very technological, and it just starts to pick up other kinds of strain. And now we have so many things. There's so many things that are introduced in society. Okay, that's the point. What are the skills? I want to cut short, and then uh, I think all of you have really understood uh, many things that that we, we you know we talked about as uh, as yesterday. The skill set you need. Okay. As young men, young women, this is the best time for you to be idealistic, and not just the best time, but also hopefully that your idealism will continue right up to your work, and also your principles are not going to be sacrificed even here if it has. If you give us a million, two million dollars to do this and that, you know, through unethical means. Right? The first thing that is stewardship. It's not just leadership, but stewardship. Right? Leadership is only to lead something, but sometimes out of context. But, the leader, but stewardship is to generate the entire, and also to, to, to lead with knowledge, values, and also to bring in as many people as possible to a certain, you know, it's like a, it's like a ship. A ship without a steward will be will go nowhere. So become a leader, not just a follower. Right? You never been. You are not born to be followers. Even when you were born, before you were born, out of the million and million and million of sperm that gets into the the mother's womb and be be, be ovulated, you are the winner already. You swam and swam. Wow, you know. Then suddenly you get X Y Z cycle. So you're already a winner, but you have an agreement. You, know? you have an agreement that you are going to follow certain things through. You know, this is a, the the, uh, the the pledge that you make is to be able to follow the right path. That's your interpretation of what it is. What is the right path? So the second thing is not just that, but because you are a human being, you are a creator. You are created, but you are also a creator. The thing that defines us, which is the difference between us and other human, other other species of uh, beings, are because we create, and therefore we innovate. But innovations alone is not about you know, innovating anything, changing the structure of things. Uh, Lao Tzu, the Chinese philosopher, once said that man has made a mistake of carving the stone. You know what I mean? The stone should be left uncarved. It is because we have carved the stone that we make into buildings, architecture structures. We make it into other things, bricks. And once you transform nature, you change one form to another, it becomes something else. The purpose, the point is that Lao Tzu said that we have to go back and bring ourselves back to nature and not transform anything without altruism. Altruism is in the whole sense of being, you know, being ethical and, and, and you know, being uh, close to to the goodness of things, rather than to create something just like I mentioned yesterday, that one can be a scientist and build atomic bombs and not have any sense of guilt, anything at all. One can build uh, anything in, in the country uh, and say that, well, I'm just doing my job as a scientist. Well, I'm just doing my job as a politician. Okay. So that's the problem with our society. There is no foundation, the groundedness in philosophy and ethics. Number three. Thing itself is it's not just learning is lifelong. From the cradle to the grave. It's a movie, right? Cradle to the grave. Yeah. And again, learning happens, you know, all the time. You know? There's in, in schools, in the in the, in schooling there's the curriculum, the formal curriculum, there's a hidden curriculum and the informal curriculum. The informal curriculum are those uh, you know um, activities outside of school after school that you do. The formal is what you do. Science, math, uh, uh, you know, English and everything. The hidden curriculum are the values that's going to be indoctrinated that use other influences come in, come in and, de and define what you're going to be as well, you know, that for the time period that you are in the school. That's hidden. That comes all kinds of values. Like it's indoctrinated, you know, indoctrination and everything. Number three, four. There's a very important uh, skill that, uh, you know, we're talking about cross-cultural competency, right? Again, we talk about what is a Malay, what is a Malay, Malayness, and again, we don't have any answer, but we start just thinking of uh, the most fundamental thing. 
of who we are in terms of the politics of identity. Who are you? Maybe in Malaysia you cannot even ask the question, uh, the Malayness or the special rights of Malay, but here we are not there, we are here. And you must ask the question because, again, you know, if you do not ask the question, then how are you going to explore the multiple options in answering the question? In fact, we might, we might, by the time we die, we might not have any answer, but at least we have all the questions. That's scary. Technological mastery, right? Master technology. Again, it's not impossible to, for me, I mean, uh, it is not uh, strange for me to say there are some people who are not, not competent at all in technology and goes into the workforce and try to apply it to the workforce and then suddenly find that you're not, you're, you're not, uh, you know, uh, saleable because you do not know the skills. Okay. Everything. Now, maybe people, when you go for an interview, people ask you, do you have a, do you have a Twitter account? Do you have a Facebook account? Uh, for better or for worse, right? Uh, not to say that they want to be your friends in, 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 on Facebook, but because they want to see how savvy you are. I'm sure all of you are savvier than many of us. Okay. Technology, how to manipulate, how to change, and how to maintain uh, you know, this, all these things become part of your skills. You could now call it uh, other things like soft skills. You'll be able to communicate, be able to participate. Put in an environment in which you are going to be, you are going to be forced to survive cross-culturally you know, then you know whether you are competent and whether you'll be able to uh, navigate and maneuver the complexity of being cross-cultural beings. Put in an environment where you need to use technology, then you can understand how well you are equipped technologically. Okay. Ethics. I think it's not just doing good things, but the whole idea, also this whole spectrum of philosophical beingness of being ethical to things. Many people, many people lose their soul because they sell, sell their souls to material beings. In politics especially, you might be idealistic now, but once you get into the, into the real thick and thin uh, things, you offer this and that, you know, good jobs so that you can support this and that, uh, you know, a system which is, uh, you know, not is corrupt, then people get excited and people lose all the values that they hold. And we do not have to emphasize this, you know, have been reading a lot about the things. And these are the things that destroy society. Now, it might make people happy and rich, you know, given millions of dollars, you know, given contracts. Companies come from outside and, and, and come to you and say, wow, oh, I, uh, I have this biotech company uh, that's coming in, I have this project that I want, I want it to do in this remote village and things like that. And then, tell me the next thing you ask, what's in it for me? How many percent am I going to? The reason why many bridges fall, the uh, the roof of uh, of palaces fall, even and stadiums uh, roof fell, is not because of the act of God or Deus and Machina, for example, not because of divine intervention. No, because you give the contract to people who do not know a lot of things, but because you are given 20% of the interest. You see how much from outside come in and then given billions of dollars and then it started chipping off, chipping off. The bigger people get the bigger chunk. And finally, what you get? All these kinds of things, destruction. And who suffers? God forbid said you are any one of the family members are not on, on the highway when that thing fell. But God works in mysterious ways. It's to prove a point that this is what's happening when the country is so corrupt. Corruption is everything, even into your mind, in your thoughts, in consciousness. Let alone eat everything. You know, building so many towers, so many, so many expensive towers. What's in it for them? What's in it for the society? What's in it for the people? Do we need another tower in, for example, Ilankawi? No. The people need education. The people need to be alleviated of the poverty. The people need to develop their mind. Good schools. Right? The best, the best way to progress society is through good schooling. That is the best investment that a nation can ever embark and afford. In our education, we are good. We have met the basic literacy needs, even, for, even above and beyond. But it can be better if we prioritize a lot of things in terms of development projects. Next, politics. Right? We're going to skip that because a lot of, all of you are experts in politics, right? All of you are in a political society now. Congratulations. Okay. 
I may not agree with